Welcome back to the show. I'm here with Christian Taylor. Hey, Phil Fisher. In Christmassy green. That's me. And Sky Jatani. Hi. Show us your pants. <laughs> I hadn't even noticed his pants. He's got <laughs> purple pants. Yeah, they're, they're, uh, Look at those spiffy boots. Those are awesome. Those are my Ron Burgundy cords. Yeah. They are purple. Sky, did you go last night? It would open no, last I night. I haven't seen that movie. No. Did you see the first one? It was. Isn't the yeah. biggest grossing one of the weekend? It just opened last night on Wednesday, so it can't be. It anything was maybe of the, the first night. Yet. I saw a thing. It can't be anything of the weekend yet. Okay, it's, well, was so Wednesday. I'm wrong, but maybe the first night. All right, I got to do the theme songs because we got a lot to talk about today. We do. Um, and Anthony requested the scientist from Where's God When I'm Scared. That's way back. Wasn't that your first video? Back. Yeah, and that was before Jimmy Gord existed, so I just kind of did him as a crazy Jimmy Gord kind of a voice. He said, to get up and walk it to me. This no, is, this, this is way. Father Guido Sarducci again. Yeah, he kind of was Father yeah. Guido Sarducci. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm driving in circles now. Hey, it's a podcast. What do you know? Hey, it's a podcast. So there's no video except there is. Hey, it's a podcast. <laughs> so lend an ear. The Fair of Isher podcast starts right here. We'll talk to Sky and Christian too. And maybe a guest. No. Oh, there is no guest here for you. Hey, it's a podcast. So in the ears, the Fever Fisher podcast starts right here. The Fever Fisher podcast starts right here. Wow, what a key change. He's more Jeez. he's change. more sensitive than Jimmy Gord. Hey, didn't somebody like suggest a new podcast theme song? Did I see that on your Facebook page? Oh, they page? just said change it to and there's video. It was another suggestion about changing the lyric, I think. But you're not into That's change, I guess. <clears throat> well, I forget. I always oh. get to that part of the song and I've forgotten cuz <laughs> it's burned into your yeah. brain. Uh, someone someone yeah. else asked what happened to the Star Wars Theme song. Oh, we forgot thing. about that. Yeah. Well, when we that? went on video, and then we had to clean up the desk. <laughs> I may have gotten rid of it. I still have I hope my not, suction cup. That was from when I gave you a birthday present. Yeah, I know. I know. That's the so only thing we, you kept of my birthday present. It. Okay, big week. We got a big week. It's Christmas for one thing. Yeah, it's Christmas Eve by Christmas, the time they're hearing as you're, it. As this is releasing, it's Christmas Eve. Merry, happy Christmas Eve to you. Shouldn't we be saying happy holidays? No. <sighs> I'm just no, kidding. No, this is a Christian podcast. <laughs> Christian. Thank goodness. Okay. Um, also, in other if, news, if you're a Jelly Telly fan and maybe uh, saw that the iOS app came out for Jelly Telly but said, where's my Android app? The Android app is now out. Woohoo! The Android app wow. for Jelly Telly is now available in the Google Store, and you can go there, and you can get it, and you can put it on your Android device, and it's okay that you have an Android device, even though they're inferior to Apple devices. <laughs> it's okay. Stop it. I don't mind, um, as long as you subscribe to Jelly Telly. In fact, I'll even say so, it's a superior device if you subscribe to Jelly Telly. There. So you can't get it. the app unless you subscribe, or can you? No, the app is free. Oh. You just can't watch anything. <laughs> it's a delivery device. Yeah. Yeah, it's a delivery device. So how does it's it work? Portal. You subscribe online? You subscribe online you, to... I don't know, oh. actually. <laughs> I don't know if you can subscribe through the app. Uh, Bill, can you subscribe through the app, or do you have to subscribe online? Online. You subscribe online. Okay. Because Bill did the demo video, and Christian Taylor did the voiceover did. for the demo video. And you can so see it on YouTube. So you tell me? Well, no. You I, did the... Wasn't it in the copy? I don't think so. It wasn't. Oh, That's okay. why I can't tell you. Okay. I can only tell you, you know, that there's videos and more. <laughs> <laughs> that was like a month ago. I can't even remember I know, that. So long ago. <laughs> well, in internet terms, in app terms. Right. So just to be clear, so, you subscribe to Jelly Telly yeah, online. Yeah. And then you probably put in a code in the app. And I don't then know you, how it works. People will figure Do it you out. Bill? People will figure it out. Uh, so you can now watch Jelly Telly online. On your iOS device, on your Android device, or on your Roku box. If you have a Roku box, what is a Roku box? What do you mean? What is? You don't know what a Roku is box is? Is that like Apple TV? Yeah, it's like Apple TV. 
Who has a Roku box? Well, lots of people. Oh, look, Bill just raised his hand. Oh, okay. Bill, oh, Bill has a Roku Bill, box. Is, is that better than, than an Apple? It's like Apple TV, in- but it doesn't tie into the Apple ecosystem. Then it's, why it's a would very, you have it? It's a very open ecosystem. Yeah. What well, has Netflix? It has Amazon Prime, you know. But then anyone, it's, it's relatively easy to submit your own channel and get a channel on Roku. So there are hundreds of channels oh. that you can pick from. You can get all sorts of crazy content. Well, I think we should stop talking about them until they're going to sponsor this podcast. Well, they're, they're getting too much free publicity. We talk about a lot, of, a lot of people and that a don't lot of, sponsor Actually, a lot podcast. of churches have Roku boxes because really? there's a lot of... In fact, churches, some mega churches have put up their own channels and it's like all their hmm. services. Oh, you can see, watch them on your TV. This is a whole world I didn't know existed. plugs into your TV. So get a, Do you have one of these? No. Why not? It? Because I have Apple TV. Hmm. What, what, what does Roku mean? It's uh, Latin for <laughs> I can't afford an Apple TV. <laughs> I was, was going to say, how do you no, know that? I don't know what it is. It's they, it, You have to make up words because you could never get the URL That's to any true. known word. So, so then you have to make nonsense words. You can watch Jelly Telly. Uh, so it has a channel. Yes, there's a Jelly Telly channel on Roku. So if you get Roku, okay. plug it into your TV, you can watch Jelly Telly just like it's Nickelodeon. But you have to be Isn't a subscriber. That awesome, right? Yes, but it's only five dollars a month. That's hardly anything at all when you consider all the work and expense that has gone into making all these programs that you can then watch. Why some people pay more than that for Club Penguin, and all you get to That's do true. That's is march your little penguin around and decorate a <laughs> fake igloo. <laughs> there's no shows. You can't learn the Bible from a penguin. Everybody knows that. Penguins don't have souls. So you need Jelly Telly. Wow. Is what's in the Bible on Jelly Telly? This is where I get kicked off my reality show for my anti-penguin tirade. Ooh. The penguins don't have souls? <laughs> Why did I just pick up my ukulele? <laughs> well, that's, we're done. We're going to wrap it up. <laughs> I think it's your, your comfort That device. was a short podcast. <laughs> it's like Linus with his blanket. Uh, you didn't answer my question. What was your question? My question was... Um, <laughs> Now I forgot what it was. What was my question? <laughs> Moving about? on. Moving See, that's on. my key to dealing with your questions. If I ignore it just for 10 <laughs> seconds, she'll completely forget. And that is true. That she asked me a question. Okay, we got we got something big going on. And the, let me just say. The blogosphere is exploding. The Twitterverse is exploding. The uh, My mind is exploding. The Facebook world is exploding. The, what else my is exploding? My heart is breaking. Uh-huh. Decoy ducks are exploding. <laughs> <laughs> Phil Televisions are exploding. Phil Robertson, patriarch of Duck Dynasty, the <laughs> Duck Dynasty clan. I'm going to cry. Father Abraham of <laughs> rural America <laughs> has been kicked off the show. Indefinitely. Because he thinks homosexuality is a sin. That's not, that's and not exactly. Not exactly right, but right. he said so rather openly in a GQ interview. And Why didn't, was he and being rather, interviewed by GQ? That's a great question. Graphically. And a little bit graphically, yeah. but that's not why. Okay, so let me ask why. you this. Did he really come right out and say it's a sin or did he just quote the scripture? Uh, uh, he so they, they asked, GQ asked him uh, to give examples of sin. I have the quote. Please sin read came it. Up. Okay. okay. Uh, During a discussion about repentance and God, Robertson is asked what he finds sinful. And he says, quote, start with homosexual behavior and just morph out from there. Bestiality, (laughs) sleeping around with this woman and that woman and that woman and those men. So (laughs) and and, and what else? Uh, And and he goes on to say he paraphrases Corinthians, quote, don't be deceived. Neither adulterers, the idolaters, the male prostitutes, the homosexual offenders, the greedy, the drunkards, the slanderers, the swindlers. They won't inherit the kingdom of God. Don't deceive yourself. It's not right. Here's my question. First of all, did he think that would go over well? He can't have thought. He kind of strikes me as a person that doesn't really care. Right, he doesn't care. He doesn't care. And he tells the truth uh, as he knows it and believes it, and he doesn't really care what the fallout is. I mean, that's his whole shtick on the show. Yeah. You know, he calls things as he sees them, and that's truly, like, I'm sad about this because I think that he brings wonderful reality and down-to-earthness to to the silly reality show, and he kind of doesn't play along. He's kind of the moral anchor of the the show. He is. The compass. You know, the thing I'm upset about is that you know when I read the stuff he said I don't disagree I mean I don't 
disagree that it was graphic in nature and it was probably very. There's some other quotes we didn't read, which are probably beyond right. the that are not kid friendly. Right. But it was GQ magazine. It's a men's quarterly. Right. That's right. the kind of stuff guys talk so, about. Yeah. So yeah, it was it was pretty coarse stuff. But when I read his, you know, intention, yeah, I agreed. With how, it. How, because it's kind of biblical. It can't because it was coarse. Because look at how coarse South Park is, or Family Guy, or uh, the comedy specials on. Well, on is it because he has an opinion network. of what is sin, and so people are all out of I, sorts because again, he has an opinion? He has committed the only, as we talked about two weeks ago, he's committed the only remaining sin in Western culture, which is prejudice. But he, okay. discrimination. Okay, he's he's not discriminating. He's basically saying what he's quoting the Bible yeah. and saying what he believes is a sin. Why are you smiling and dismissing what I'm saying? I'm not. I'm just <laughs> I'm just saying, hey, fun. <laughs> <laughs> okay, come on, Scott. Well, no, I, obviously I'm I'm conservative on these issues, so I'm not I'm not going to take disagreement with what he is arguing from Scripture. The question is not. Is he right or wrong? The question is, was A&E, the television network, right or wrong for making him leave right. the show? So what happened next? So he said that it was published, I don't know. Well, it doesn't even come out till January. Doesn't How does everybody... Yeah, but they, they released it It early. was released ahead of time. And GLAAD, the gay, lesbian, yeah, anti-alliance of anti-defamationaries. It, they were pretty mad. Well, they they said he... They, they referred to his, his... What he said as lies. His they, lies about... People. What did they say? Glad said on Wednesday uh, that his remarks were some of the vilest and most extreme statements uttered against LGBT people in a mainstream publication, and his quote was littered with updated, stere- outdated stereotypes and blatant misinformation. Phil and his family claim to be Christian, but Phil's lies about an entire community fly in the face of what true Christians believe. He clearly knows nothing about gay people or the majority of Louisianians and Americans who support legal recognition for loving and committed gay and lesbian couples. Phil's decision to push vile and extreme stereotypes is a stain on A&E and its sponsors who now need to re-examine their ties to someone with such public disdain for LGBT people and families. Okay, what did he lie about, number one, and what did he disdain Okay, other than sin? I, I'm, th- this is just to put facts on the table, not to make an argument, but I think what they're referring to is a quote which we didn't read mm-hmm. from Phil, which made it sound as if people who are gay are making an intentional decision to be gay, and that's what they're saying. He no. did say that? Well, he alluded to that when he was discussing why would somebody choose... Choose Why would you choose another man rather male than anatomy over female anatomy? It was kind of what he said, which yeah. is kind of a, a good old, you know, good old boy perspective. No, but here's the deal. So they they, 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 one of those they were you ups- could pick one of those. They in, in part of the response said, you know, being gay is not a choice. The way he made it sound like it's a choice, and then they were upset that he linked homosexuality and bestiality together right in the same sentence, which is... Which he did, yeah, well, and, and several, several of the write-ups have, have said his comparison of homosexuality to bestiality, and he didn't make a comparison. Yeah, he didn't. He, he just was listing made a the, list. Right, of, he said, you start here and work outward. And, and you yeah. start at the middle is homosexuality, behavior. Behavior. He didn't actually say orientation. He mm-hmm. said behavior. Right out from there is bestiality, and right out from there is having sex with lots of men and women. Like, yeah. Well, that's an interesting sort of a concentric circle of. But I think here's it's the pretty thing. obvious he's not making a theological argument. <laughs> he's he's a good old boy talking off the cuff. No, about- no. Here's the thing. He, I think he has a point in that when you look at the creator of things, you know, it's like a puzzle piece. The man fits with the woman, and that's clearly the way that God designed it. It's not saying that you know <laughs> it's we, a were, <laughs> we were family show. We were family. We that there aren't differences, but you know, we believe that there was. A a created order, right? Yeah. But that sin entered in yeah. and uh-huh. broke it, uh-huh. yeah. right? I don't think yeah. I don't think the issue here is parsing what Phil said. I think the issue is how the, how the network how the network reacted to it. No, it, there is a problem because other people are reacting to him, not necessarily well, the I think network. I, and I'm upset about that because I don't understand. I think it. what what he did is he expressed the orthodox, traditional Christian view of sexuality in pretty. And why Graphic isn't that okay? Because and, 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 it's not okay anymore. And, and but he has, it's language. just an opinion that he has. Yeah, but why is he getting slaughtered because he is an it's opinion? It's considered hate speech now. Well, basically, we've, he, we've he, turned a corner. You know, to, think, to put it 
back into the A&E camp, why did they ask him to step away, is they're in the business of attracting a large audience to watch commercials that people will pay for. Sure. And if you are going to alienate or offend part of that audience by one of the people on your show, almighty dollar dictates, well, we got to do something about that well, offensive person. Variety said, because uh, they've been covering it, they're hot and heavy on this story. There's like th- They've done three stories on the story in the last 12 hours. And the, the current, the newest story on Variety now is uh, that A&E did the right thing in acting so quickly because if they hadn't, because of the, the Twitter sphere and the blogosphere, mm-hmm. uh, that the network would have become a pariah in Hollywood, that, that creatives would have distanced themselves from the network uh, because Hollywood is so, you know, typically pro-gay that to take that position, I mean, it would be like being anti-Semitic in Hollywood. Mm-hmm. You know, you, mm-hmm. you, you're dead. You're just done. Here's, here's what I think is interesting. Okay. And this is, I think, worth a little bit of discussion. Um, As opposed to what I believe Phil, is worth discussion. <laughs> no, Clearly. We've, we've now. You, we've <laughs> no, I'm not discussed. done with what I we've, we've think. We've discussed. Well, this isn't, this isn't about homosexuality. Maybe Duck Dynasty can about. go on Hoku or whatever that thing is called. Roku. 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 They can whatever. have their own channel. Are you that outdated? I don't Your know daughter is right. You are literally a sloth. You, I you know just said it five minutes ago. I don't it's keep haiku. up on these things. It's haiku. Roku. No, it's Roku. Okay, so Phil go Robertson. Ahead. He's a performer on a show on a major cable network. He has a contract. Correct. You can't just kick someone off for no cause. Well, That's there's clearly the a way. cause. Right. So the question is, what part of his contract did, did he violate? Did they use? What are they saying he violated? And I've I've done you know I've done performer contracts with major studios. I did one with Universal for the pirate movie, um, and the, the standard kind of the boilerplate you would have a moral turpitude clause. A moral turpitude clause says if you do something mor- morally so bad that it would denigrate the name of the studio you're partnering with. You know, if you kill somebody, if you are Bernie Madoff and you're part of a huge you know, scheme, if you're guilty of significant moral turpitude, um, w- the contract is void. They can literally walk away from right. the contract. And is that term defined anywhere in the contract? Or is it, no. Because that it's, gets slippery. It's it? pretty vague. But mm-hmm. then also, you could, like, I think my current deal uh, w- with DreamWorks, because I now do voices for DreamWorks since they own VeggieTales, um, also talks about uh, doing th- behavior that would subject... Uh, DreamWorks to public ridicule. Oh. Which is also fairly common mm-hmm. if you're an actor, is that if you're doing things, you know, and then, so that would be grounds for, you know, the Miley Cyruses of the world to get, you know, the Lindsay right. Lohans to get kicked out of about half of the deals they make. Unless the ridicule results in a high degree of page views yes, and, which, and which revenue. Means, which means it's completely discretionary. Right. You know, you can, we're, we're just looking at this as an out. If you do something really stupid, or if we hire you, you know, because you're, you're a, a person of high moral standing, and then... Then we discover, and there, you know, there's a huge outrage because you're actually a liar and a thief. Even if you didn't break the law, we can cut your contract. And, and this is true of Christian publishing contracts as well. Another that's example. true. So yeah. it's not uncommon. So my hunch is that they, I, I would, I would love to know which clause specifically they used to kick him off the show. Whether they consider it, they might have an anti-discriminatory clause and say, so this was hate speech. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what I'm curious about now is um, basically what he did was state, for example, the, the position of the Catholic Church on the subject of homosexuality. So if you're a Catholic and you're an actor... Do you now know that you can't say anything about homosexuality because there's precedent to it being used now as as either moral turpitude or subjecting your studio partner to public ridicule? Okay, here's my question along those lines. Hypothetically, if in the interview the interviewer says, so, Mr. Robertson, what do you think is sinful? If he were to have said something like, well, as a Christian, I believe that any sexual activity— or behavior outside of the bounds yeah. of a marriage between a man and a woman is sinful. Period. End of. You know, if, if that, 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 that is all. And if he had been to seminary, have if he had been to seminary, and he was, you well, know, know a different, then he could have answered. I'm saying, is it is it possible to articulate the Orthodox Christian teaching on sexuality I, and not be I, assaulted? I, in this I way. Think, I'd love to know the I answer. I think what that. he should have said, as he should have said, you know what's sinful? GQ magazine is trying to set up 
uh, a relatively undereducated hillbilly. Oh wait a minute, he's got a he's got a postgraduate that's, degree in that's, education. That's true. Does he? Yeah, but he plays an undereducated hillbilly on TV. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. <laughs> he's a smart that's guy who created a multi-million he dollar is company. A smart guy. I mean, they actually Willie really did that. Well, they he's wa- not an idiot. they wanted him to talk about homosexuality. Right. Well, and so he has they a weren't going to say. But the thing is, you know what? He things. does a lot of speaking outside of the mm-hmm. show. Yeah. And and he, like he said at some point, I read some. Maybe response. he didn't know he was there because of the show. Maybe he thought they were just I, I talking think, to him as the speaker. I think the re- this is again hypothetically guessing, but I think the reason he has been okay with this up to this point because he doesn't strike me as the kind of guy. I mean, they probably really had to talk him into doing it. But in his mind, he may be rationalizing and saying by doing this. And by praying in Jesus' name at the end, then I'm being some sort of witness. And that's what he said in his response was, you know, I felt like it's my calling after I became a Christian to go out there and tell everybody about Christ. And so I feel like that's genuinely what his passion is. And so he's spoken very forthrightly off camera in churches and in other places about what he believes. And I think he probably didn't separate that in GQ at all. And I think he probably thought this is my opinion and I can say it. Yeah. I, uh, what I'd like to know is, is he being uh, reprimanded for what he believes or for the manner in which he communicated it? Good question. Right. Uh, because I think my hunch is, I could be completely wrong, my hunch is that if he had communicated it, as I tried to articulate a few seconds ago in a, in a non-inflammatory way, to, but still stating clearly what the Christian traditional view is on sexuality, right. I'm not sure there would have been this, this firestorm. I think he'd, st- I think there'd, it'd still be there. And I think too, A&E probably has somewhere in their company, you know, mission statement or whatever it's called at that level that, you know, they are in support of that and anything that is bashing that or they're not well, going to they, touch. Yeah. I mean, their response to glad was, uh, a and E networks have always been champions of the LGBT community, right? Which kind of made me want to, you know, okay, when did A and E launch? You know, what year mm-hmm. was that? And were they honestly from the get go promoting LGBT causes, or is this just now the position that big companies need to take? Of course, we've always been pro gay. Of course. Why wouldn't you? When was anyone ever not pro-gay? Is it just revisionist history? What, what if we t- take this scenario and let's change the players a, a little yeah. bit? Yeah. All right. Let's do fun. it. Let's do a little okay. a mental Chick-fil-A. exercise. It's Chick-fil-A, Chick-fil-A so, and it's gay marriage. Let, let's say instead of <laughs> Duck Dynasty and Phil Roberts and all that, let's say A&E had a reality TV about a Muslim family. Okay. In America. Yeah. And, I'm offended already. And, <laughs> and, and the patriarch is being interviewed. Yeah. And, and so the interviewer asks him, so what do you think about Jesus as a Muslim? And there's two options. And he could have answered in the, in the traditional Orthodox Muslim line, which would have been, well, I think Jesus was a prophet and, uh, you know, spoke the words of Allah, but the Christians have misunderstood his message and he was not the son of God. And, and that's my understanding of my teaching, my belief of Islam, or, I mean, then people would have been, oh, okay, fine, that's whatever. What if this Muslim patriarch had said, um, I think that, that, that Jesus is a prophet in our tradition, but that Christians are um, idolaters and they're evil and they've persecuted Muslims for too many years and they're unthinking, uncritical, bigoted jerks. Don't you think Christians would have been really upset about... He didn't call anyone to I, Well, I'm just... You get his it's point. A, it's a yeah, loose parallel. I'm yeah. saying using inflammatory language. I'm right. sure there would have been a lot of Christians who would have been upset about that comment and probably right. would have come down pretty hard on A&E to say, hey, you've got a bigot here and you're right. on your thing. But so, look, at the, look at the inflammatory language that Matt Stone and Trey Parker have used against Scientology, against comedy. Mormonism. It's what comedy. Is, what is Duck Dynasty? Well, well the article well, wasn't... Because you can say all the, kinds of terrible things as a stand-up comedian about all kinds of people and people yeah. go, oh, 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 and then it's over. Yeah. So I think it's very different when, okay. you're, when you're trying to get a laugh. But, well, but in reality TV, you're just being you all the time. That's kind of the idea. Now you've, you've kind of encouraged a caricature of yourself to be formed because it's what the producer says. Ah, that was great. They loved it when you did that. Do that more. Uncle Cy, just keep talking. No matter <laughs> what, just keep talking. And so Uncle Cy, now he's going to go out and do PR. They're going to send him out to do interviews and he's going to be the Uncle Cy from the show, and right? say, hey, let me He's, tell you something. Yeah, I don't want to tell you something. <laughs> Listen, Jack, 
So, so, so isn't so is this Phil Robertson being interviewed as the real Phil Robertson, or is the character from Duck Dynasty? And if so, for Phil, they're is there the same. Any difference? Yes. I think yeah. they're the same, and I think that's the issue. You know, I'm going to be very curious as to how his family responds yeah. to this. Yeah, yeah, because Variety is saying, "Hey, it was a good thing because you only lose one of them, and you can carry the show with I'll all the rest of them." I'll be very surprised if that happens because you know they do stick together. They're not going to be happy Birds about it. Feather. And I, I don't think the show works as well without Phil. Right. And it's so just a bunch of kids being being nutty. You have to have that. You need the father figure. You do. You, you have can't to have, have the my op- three sons without my dad. Yeah. There's got to be the dad to have the sons. It's true. Right? So, it's just natural. But do you it's think, illogical to think the otherwise. Do you think the show is so popular, though, because there's this patriarch figure at the end who gives a prayer and there's this little veneer it's, of Christianity? Or is it popular because it's a bunch of rednecks? There's lots of big redneck shows. Don't crazy say stuff. veneer of Christianity. That there's, offends me. No, I mean, it's not Christian. a Christian. It's you not, offended what, Christian. What I mean by that is it's not billed as a Christian show. It's You could watch... Right. You could watch have 21 minutes of the show it has, and not have it has any a, Christian content. It has a Christian glaze. Has, yeah, Like exactly. a honey ham. I'm not saying it's not genuine. A honey I think it's very ham. genuine. But it's not billed by A&E as this is a show about Christians for Christians. No. Right? Right. It's a show. they never Correct. do that because they, in, from their beginning, have been a staunch, <laughs> uh, a heroic supporter yeah. and champion of the LGBT movement. I think <laughs> the popularity of that show is because these are really strange Funny, yeah, fun but people. people. Every time, though, you, you see it reviewed or, or people f- talk about it as fans, they talk about it. And it's so cool to see them pray together at the end. And I can see that. Sure. That but I don't is, think that's the I, draw. I think, I think that there is a huge audience of faith people that are so excited to be able to watch something together as a family. Right. Funny and, people that, that are actually Christians. That are and, actually and Christians clean. and clean yeah. and yeah. stand by what they. they're clean. They're Christians. <laughs> they're excited. Except they're kind of dirty on the outside. They're, but dirty on the there outside. There is a shortage of, of... They're the opposite of Pharisees. They are. They really are. I, it's m- true. My kids, <laughs> over Thanksgiving break, was it, started, got into Duck Dynasty. And yeah. I hadn't really watched them before. And we were watching as a family. Are, are, and I they, was, are they now anti-gay? <laughs> no, not that I'm my, aware of. My son was Psy for Halloween. That's funny. I know. <laughs> but and he had the tea glass. As I was watching the show with my kids, I realized there are not very many... 30 minute shows that I can sit down and watch with my kids and I can understand why that's very appealing to families. Right. But if there was not a prayer at the end of the show, I wouldn't be like, oh, no, I'm not going to watch it. But but you're you. You're (laughs) you're not middle. You're not typical average middle America sitting in front of the TV. All of those things come together and that's why it is so hugely popular. And I do think, I mean, there already has been a petition out, right, of, you know, bringing him back. Um, Yeah. And oh, I'm I, sure there's going to be quite a hubbub. Fox mm-hmm. News is already all over it. I They're mean, jumping I on truly want to understand, is it what he said or how he said it? And is he not allowed to have do, his own do opinion? Do you think that A&E would ever make another statement about it? Or are they just, well, oh, we're th- done. We are so done with this. I think we all know, even personally, people in the entertainment business in Hollywood who are Roman Catholic or Christian or whatever and hold to a traditional view. And yet they're there. And I, yet I'm guessing if they were to say things in the same language that Phil Robertson did, they would also have trouble in their career. Well, I will tell you, in my industry, and I work with tons of different people, when, and I stand up and say what I believe. Mm-hmm. I'm very open about it, and I am very, very different. And people know that, and most people will quietly say, I'm a Christian too. But they will n- not say it out loud because there is a huge prejudice against anyone that says they're a Christian in my industry. But I'm pretty sure they're... I'd be surprised if anybody didn't think Phil Robertson had a conservative view on homosexuality right. before this interview. Especially since it's already been passed around the internet of little clips right. of him talking about it right. in churches. Which is why I think it was how he articulated his view, not that he holds this view, that became the problem. Yeah. In related news. Oh, we're switching <laughs> subjects. Uh, uh, but similar. Okay. Uh-oh. Russia. You know, Russia. Rush the country? Russia the country, uh-huh. Winter Olympics. The Russia? No, no, no. That's the Ukraine. <laughs> oh, okay. I oh, was corrected. You were, I was you were corrected. corrected. Uh-huh. It's Ukraine. It's yeah. not the Ukraine. But it's the Yukon, right? I'm going to the Yukon, right, Jack? I don't know. I'm we going don't know. to the Yukon. Okay. I think, so I think it's because it's a region. Yukon is like a re- It's like I'm going to the Rocky Mountains. Okay. I'm going yeah. to the oh, Yukon. The Great Plains. I'm going to the Caribbean. The, yeah. So he said he didn't know, but he really does I'm know. going to the Arkansas. 
But you don't, yeah, no. exactly. Yeah, you, you when it's a proper that. noun, like I'm going to the Great Lakes. Well, what is your point? I'm going to the. I'm I'm practicing this. I'm going <laughs> to the Bay of Fundy. I'm Where's going that? to the Cape of Good Hope. It's it works. I've been. There. I can't come up with one that doesn't work. <laughs> I'm going to the backyard. How about I'm the going to the bathroom. The bathroom. It's a region. Mm-hmm. The bathroom is a region. Wow. Is this like mind blowing for another you? Another region. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. So okay. Russia. Yeah, Russia. Russia. So they passed love. their very unpopular law about. <gasps> oh, I know about, what you're going to talk about. Uh, prop- propagandizing homosexuality to children. You can't promote homosexuality in front of children in any way, shape, or form. It's very controversial, partly because no one knows exactly what it means. What yeah, does what that is, mean? What does exactly? it mean? They haven't clarified. So, the, well, they were keeping out homosexual athletes, wasn't that the no, issue? No, no what that's was the not issue? The issue, but but. Well, what was trying. the issue? Because I saw <laughs> I saw a, a, so, a gay athlete get in, so, and that was a big deal. No, no apparently, no, 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 that's not that's not it. But you're close. <laughs> yeah. Um, so there have been lots of protests. And uh, and people, some fat glad, and some other groups were saying we should boycott the Olympics, boycott the Winter Olympics to show them how evil they are. Uh, Jay Leno just compared the, uh, Russian policies about homosexuals to Nazi Germany. Jay Leno in his Jay in, Leno in his wow he, stand up. No, he was interv- He was in an interview oh. with with someone talking about it, and he said, it's "Was like, he suspended indefinitely?" It's like in 1936 when the Germans were saying, "Hey, all you, Jay, uh, all you guys, you have to go live over there." That he was comparing this mm-hmm. policy, uh, which obviously Russians are a little offended at the comparison of them to the Nazis. Well, I would hope for so. For not wanting homosexuality to be promoted to children. Anyway, we just announced who we're sending to, as our official government delegate to the Winter Olympics in Russia. Okay, uh, we're sending not the president or the vice president or their wives or either of their wives. Or any cabinet member. Oh. So no major. We're sending one person from the government who's lower down, but we're sending in our official delegation, Billie Jean King, who was the first major openly gay sports star. And a strong advocate for yeah. equal rights. Yeah, for and, and, and another uh, a gay athlete. So we, we are sending. It's a message. It's a huge message yeah. of we are unhappy with you and you better change your policy. And and my point is because you see you see Western wealthy Western nations doing this. You know, we talked a few weeks ago in Africa that, and, and the treatment of women in Africa and that in many countries, um, anti-rape laws and, and different laws about how you treat women are on the books, but they're not enforced. The only reason they're on the books is because Western countries pressured them to put those laws on the books, but they don't actually believe them. So they haven't caught up. Their beliefs are not in a line with the Western countries that are pressuring them. So they're putting the laws. So my point is with Russia and with, with Africa, how is this not cultural imperialism? How, how is it not you know, us trying to apply our values to them, whether they want them or not? Because when Christians did that, you know, when when it was Christian, they were called the Crusades. Yeah, uh, yeah, kind of. Uh, but when Christians, you know, Christian Europe tried to spread Christianity to South America, to India, you know, it it was oh, that's terrible. You should never do that. But now the liberal West is trying to spread liberal Western Western values to all these nations, and they don't see the irony. Well, obviously, it's justifiable in their eyes because their values are right. Well, everything is justifiable but in your it's, own it's eyes. When you're, when you're talking about tolerance and, and dignity right. for, for everyone, regardless of their race, gender, religion, and, sexual orientation, and what we keep talking that about scene is are, an ideal. These are universal human rights. Right. But there's no such thing. Wait, what do you mean? Well, there is no right that well, isn't. C.S. Lewis says that, that things are granted. absolute. Yeah, that's because he believes in God. But okay. if you reject if you reject a higher authority, there are no rights. Well, that's true. I say all the time, why in the world do we expect non Christians to act or behave like Christians? I don't. So yeah, well, so a lot I, of people do. I don't. A lot of people hold that kind of morality I, to everyone. What, so, so what should that. Western liberal democracies like the United States say to Russia about this? Anything? Uh, um, no? They should. Uh, well, you could say, hey, have you have you considered it our way? And then Russia might say, yes, and we don't like it. And then you'd say, well, 
Well, okay. The, the, the We're report, not the boss of you. The report. We're I, not the boss I, of you. I like. I know. I like that response. I do think it is We're not imperialism. The, boss of the report. I, I like that cultural imperialism. Heard That's what it is on the radio about this. I agree. This little thing was that um, some of these gay groups, like Glad and others, had been putting an enormous amount of pressure on the Obama administration to give some kind of strong rebuke to the Russians for these policies and that this is this has much more to do with American politics than it does international politics. It's the Obama administration sending a signal on behalf of the gay lobby in the US yeah. to Russia. Not so not England, because they think it's going to be England doesn't care. Well I don't know what's going Canada on in England, but I, I think the response from our government was had much more to do with national politics. With and internal stuff. Internal in the US. and appeasing a, a democratic base yeah. than it does a, a well, genuine that, desire to influence Russia. Uh, you're saying we don't have a genuine influ- desire to influence Russia? Well, I think Russia? we know it's not going to make a difference. Okay. I think it was symbolic in order to appease a certain base on the Democratic Party right. that has a lot of influence. But you see that we're, we do this, right? You see that yeah. we, we say, a hey, lot. hey, you are not treating women the way we now have started treating mm-hmm. women. Or you are not treating homosexuals the way we now, as of the last, okay, 20 years, are treating homosexuals. Mm-hmm. You know, forget the fact that it took us a thousand years to get to this point. You need to get there exactly when we do, mm-hmm. and come to the same conclusion it's that we've like come to. Kind of like a big to. bully. It's it it is when 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 Disneyland when Disneyland or Disney announced they were opening in Paris. You know, Michael Eisner made the speech in Paris. We're building Euro Disneyland right here in Paris, and the Parisians pelted him with eggs and flour. He was really? pelted. Yes. And the complaint was that That's how co- they say we love you. It's, it is. It's, <laughs> here, go bake us something. Um, and it was called cultural imperialism. Mm-hmm. We don't like the Disney company because you're exporting your values and forcing them down our throats. You yeah. know, your dreams, right. your magic, your Which is a lot of why Muslim countries resent the West because they right. don't want. Because right. Hollywood exports right. Western values. And, but then, and then we look down on, you know, Christian. Christians in in England actually kind of made a mess in India because they got mad at different beliefs, you know, that were harmful, like like women throwing themselves on the funeral pyres of their husbands because it was tradition that that's what you did when your husband died. You yikes! You burn mm-hmm. with him, and so uh, Christians in in Great Britain uh, pushed to make that illegal, which caused riots, you know, mm-hmm. in India because these are our values. Who are you to say? And so the criticism back from business interests was, "Hey, Christians, cool." It. We're here for business. We're not here to change right. their values. And we can't rule 300 million Indians successfully with there are only a thousand British diplomats in India ruling over 300 million people. And this, we only, the only Those way we can do this, <laughs> the only way we can do this is if they're happy. Right. But, okay. That so example, don't mess with their values. That example is a perfect case of how these things are driven by economics. Yeah. Right. There is an economic interest in England having influence over India. Let's not rock so the boat. So why, though, are Western nations forcing African nations to put laws to protect women on their books? Well, I bet if those African nations had a whole lot more money, yeah. we wouldn't be forcing it. Just, I mean, look at the difference between how the U.S. has handled China. Com- communism in China, China versus yeah. communism in Cuba. Oh, very right? different. We make China. That is very different. Very I never thought different. about that. We make China a most. I can smoke Chinese cigars. <laughs> That's right. We make China one of our most favored nation trading partners, and we have an embargo against Cuba. Why? Because China has a billion people that we want to sell our products to, and Cuba's a little or island. Or could it be that they're bigger and more powerful, you know, it's politically? A, it's about and economics. Yeah. It's about economics. They're also 70 miles from our, our borders, and there's a huge Cuban population in Miami that but really But if there was a massive so economic money. interest for trading with Cuba, we right. would be there. So cigars aren't compelling. Is that right. what I'm learning? Exactly. Cigars so are, are not sure compelling not as everything else we so have in Walmart. They are so powerful and could destroy Well, what us? is power? No, they power couldn't. is economics. And we've been doing this since long before they yeah. were powerful. So it, 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 it's, and similarly, you know, there's some, some. Christian is speechless. <laughs> speechless, I tell you. Well, you know, some folks in the gay. Gotta think about that. Some folks in the gay lobby were pushing the administration to boycott the Winter Olympics in Russia yeah. this year over all these controversies. So this is a way to ignore that without saying so that you're ignoring it. We haven't, we haven't pro, um, boycotted a, an Olympics since, was it 1980? Yeah, in and Moscow? it was a disaster. Well, why would we not boycott this one? 
Because American corporations have a whole lot of money riding on these winter games, yeah. and they're not about to pull that out and have McDonald's and Coca-Cola. Then. We, oh, did we didn't then. have big economic interests in Russia in 1980. No, no, but we, but the Olympics are big business still. Well, the Olympics but they're much big bigger business. now than they used to be. Yeah. So anyway, yeah, I, you got to look right. at the where the well, we did. Here we I am, did. the Marxist against. I know. Look at the economics I, of this. I mean, this is this is like your mantra. It is well, not that I'm in agreement with it. Do you think money makes the world go round? Uh, I think money dictates a lot of the decisions that make the world He thinks money is the root of all evil. I, I'm just Do you know saying what when, Richard Dawkins says? Religion is the root of all evil. Hmm. Hmm. Well, what about maybe it's crossing religion with money? That gets maybe problematic for sure. <laughs> very really quickly, the there's root. been recent controversies in the Christian publishing industry that I think could be illuminated. What if do you, you just mean by that? The money. Oh, we don't have to go there. Well, why not? I mean, we're in a podcast. It sounds interesting <laughs> no, to me. Let's wrap it up with <laughs> a, a it little up. talk about Christmas, shall we? Sure. It is Christmas Eve after all. <laughs> it is Christmas Eve as we're releasing this podcast, not as we're recording it. So we're pretending. This is make believe. It's not lying. You you know, you shouldn't, shouldn't show be behind Christian. the curtain, Phil. Give him a little like bit that of curtain a, over you know, there. Some mystery. Yeah. You guys see that? That's a shower That's curtain. That's a shower curtain. <laughs> That's Phil's private shower. Oh, hey, the and the, these are crates. The Pope. The Pope is the man of the year. The Pope is the man. Of I the vote year. for him. I voted. Mention, I just read the full story in Time Magazine. Really I've been reading. Long. There's yeah. There's a really long article in the New Yorker. Yeah. Right now by James Carroll. I'm in the middle of Are reading. they pro Pope? What what's their point of view? Well, James Carroll's an interesting guy because he he was a, a Catholic priest. Did he write Alice in Wonderland? No, but he's written a number of novels. <laughs> oh, okay. He was a that, Roman Catholic priest nice. from 19, yeah. 1969, yeah. 1974, something like that. And okay. he left the church because he felt it was a um too conservative, essentially, yeah. in, its, in its dictates. He and was he, a liberal Catholic. Well, person. he was very drawn to the church by Vatican II. Yeah, and, and we all were. And John the Twenty Third, that po- and and the reforms that were going on. But he felt like the reforms were never really enacted, and it got yeah. super. And and he's very excited about Francis and writes about his whole journey. And the one thing that's kind of weird, I didn't read the Time article, but I read critiques of the Time article, which may be unfair. But some people are saying that the reason he's man of the year is because everyone is trying to interpret Pope Francis through their own lens. Mm -hmm. So, oh, he's pro-gay now or he's pro-contraception or pro And I I don't think that's actually what he's said because he hasn't changed any of the church's teachings. He's just taking it. But it's the way that he is responding to people. You know why people like him so much? Because he loves people like Jesus. Yeah, Mm -hmm. you need to read the Time article because he's the closest thing to a representation of Christ on Earth in a celebrity setting. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, there are lots of, and and this is one thing that we lack in the in the Protestant world. You know, we don't have a pope. We don't have if you become a celebrity, it's it's through it's usually bad. It's through force of personality. If you become a celebrity in the Protestant world, it's because you wrote a big book, or you did, or you just keep going and writing, and and something clicks, and suddenly you're a celebrity. In the, in the Catholic Church, the guy on top is automatically a celebrity. Right. Guess what? You're the pope. So the fact that you could get a pope that is so Christ-like, you know, is just awesome. Yeah. And, and he can't get fired. Right. He can't get fired for, like, not bringing in enough attendance or his book's not selling well enough. He can't. So he gets it's pretty to, cool. I know. He gets to be Christ-like yeah. in front of the entire world. I bet he hates it. I bet and he hates the man of I the also, year thing. I also think it's a, it's, he probably does. Uh, I also think it's a huge uh, just relief and contrast from, you know, for, for the world watching the last 30 or 40 years of this is a Christian, mm-hmm. you know, and it's been the cranky politically active. That's exactly it's right. been the, you know, I hate gays. It's been, you know, it's just been, it's been ugly. Yeah. You know, the, the representations you see in the media are ugly. And then you see this guy and I, th- I honestly think there could be huge implications for the global church in Pope Francis just in in creating a new face because because the Catholic Church if you're going to be anti-religion the Catholic Church is the biggest target in the world right you right. know it is so easy to take swings at the Catholic Church because it's monolithic and when they do things wrong they do them on a massive scale right mm-hmm. you know when we do things wrong we do them on individual church levels we, right. we and it's hard to really pick except Westboro Baptist but you know they're you can just say they're, they're tiny they're, yeah. they're kooks <laughs> Catholic Church does something right it is so visible that the whole world can just say wow is that what this is yeah. supposed to be about I, I and the fact that he is throwing off the trappings of the middle middle ages 
Catholic Church. Right. He won't wear the red he, shoes. He won't wear the red shoes, the furs. Red shoes. He's gotten rid of the Mercedes I and he has a that. Ford Focus. He lives yeah, in a little two bedroom apartment rather than the palace. It's nuts. Yeah. It's like crazy so can what I, he's doing. Can I read a couple sentences from the James Carroll article? I think it yes. encapsulates some of what you're trying to say. Uh, speaking of Francis, he says, repeatedly he argued that the church's purpose was more to proclaim God's merciful love for all people than to condemn sinners for having fallen short of strictures, especially those having to do with gender and sexual orientation. His break from his immediate predecessors, John Paul II, who died in 2005, and Benedict XVI, blah, 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 is less ideological than intuitive. An inclusive vision of the church centered on an identification with the poor. From this vision, theological and organizational innovations flow. The move from rule by non-negotiable imperatives to leadership by invitation and welcome is as fundamental to the meaning of the faith as any dogma. So rather than saying, as his predecessors did, here's what we believe, here's what we're against, his posture is one of come and see, come and engage God, and let's, let's deal with all those other issues down the road. And I think that shift in posture from a defensive who's in and who's out to a welcoming Come right. and see posture has been incredibly well received by the world. Right. Do you think that his example will be or will shape Protestant, you know, preachers or teachers? Because it is wonderful. I mean, it's yeah. a wonderful, refreshing and clear example that if you love and live differently and love like Christ, you will draw all people. Yeah, I think, though, I think there's what won't be effective is to say, hey, the way he's behaving is really working. I'm going to copy it. Because right. he is who he is in Christ. Right. So well, if you aren't who he is in Christ, you can't just say. But there are a lot of, pro- are a lot of non-denominational say, or Protestant leaders and teachers and speakers that also, I'm sure, on a private level or even in their churches, live in love like that. Yeah. But, if you're, but they if don't you're receive really, that kind of attention well, they or won't. influence. They, they, you can't have as much th- attention and influence as the Pope. Yeah, and I think where, where unless he, you're Miley where Cyrus, he, where evangelical leaders tend to get media attention is when they're outrageous. I know. Yeah. That's Whereas my you, point. The Pope gets media attention. Period. Just for he's being the Pope. Pope. And and that doesn't bode well. You have to be the president. If you were the president and then you started living like Jesus, I think there are lots of, would of notice. wonderful godly. Protestant evangelical church leaders who probably resonate very strongly with the values that this pope is espousing, but they're not going to get any attention for right. it because they're not the pope. What would get attention, I think, other than being in that kind of office where the attention <laughs> is demanded, is communities of believers living like that. I see what you're saying. It you makes know, a lot of sense. So, he He's already in that place yeah. where there's tons of media attention. Everybody's watching to see what right, he's right, going right. to do. Right. No one's watching to see what I'm going to do. And so if there were b- large communities that began to act differently Differently and act more like Christ. What is that? I don't is, know. Is that, so, is that somebody's taco? phone? I think is, no, is he, taco no, passing no, no, gas. Taco, what is that? Taco is on airplane mode. <laughs> well, it's is, not is, mine. Is Taco dreaming that he's on a long flight? Maybe it is it, mine. It's Christian. It's mine. <laughs> She's been beeping. <laughs> but you know it. what? I put it on silent. All I'm just right. not sure how that's. You want to finish that statement? Because then we got to wrap up. Uh. Well. No, oh, it's gone. <laughs> That's what my kids say. Oh, what's that? Distract me and I'm done. Remember that scene from uh, Up with the dog? Yeah. Squirrel. Squirrel. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's Christian. Yeah. That's kind of what's happening here. (laughs) Pope. All right. What am I singing about? Well, we talked about the Pope. Duck Dynasty. And a lot of Duck Dynasty. See if, boy, Phil Robertson. What was in the middle? He could learn something from the Pope. I hate to say that because he's a good guy but he could learn something from the Pope about how you're received. You know yeah. what? That's interesting. Because I, I think he's Christ-like on the inside, but I also think he's been... Rough around the edges. He's rough around the edges, but he's also been very much encouraged to just speak your mind because it, it's popular. You know yeah. what? I am going to agree with you. Wow. Thanks. That's a I Christmas think, gift. I think you're probably <laughs> right a, a there, A Christmas though. miracle. What was the middle story? Uh, oh, the gay, the gay stuff in oh yeah, Russia, Russia. Okay, Russia. We had uh, okay. Yeah, Work that one in. 
The Russian Olympics don't want you to be gay, but we're gonna send them Billie Jean King anyway, cuz that's what we think, that everyone should think just like we do. And the Pope is a really, really, really great guy, and Phil Robertson got in trouble for poking gays in the eye, and I think that he should think a little more like Pope Francis du- does. <laughs> You were doing so great. Thank you, because if you have a stage, you got to be careful, because people like love, they want you to be prayerful, and don't judge quite so vociferously. Wow. And there's nothing that rhymes with, oh, trees are coniferously <laughs> warming up to wintertime. That makes so no sense. So Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye. See you next time. Merry Christmas.